hey my shells welcome back to my channel if you are new welcome 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 make sure you subscribe like comment share and welcome to the bands family you are now a part of it so a millbrook story part three and surviving the game surviving prostitution part one yeah ready Picking up right where i left off from a millbrook story part two nothing ended how i wanted it wanted it to end my mom she got tired of me causing drama and chaos uh mind you she lived in a whole nother state a boyfriend at the time he lost his mind. Like, he got paranoid. He didn't trust me no more. He wanted to kill me, but he didn't have the heart to do it either. I started to think I was in over my head. And I, I just thought everybody was after me to kill me. So, I started running. What was I running from? Who knows? Because they were fucking pussy. Like, I, when I think about it now, and like, when I came back after being on the run i realized like bit what the fuck was you run who was you running from <laughs> what uh shala you know better and then that's when i thought <laughs> i'm just as pussy as they are <laughs> like i just i lost my mind a little bit so i remember that same night i was hurt i was hurt like, I don't know why I thought my mom was gonna, like, react in a different way. And her not, like, being on my side, like, with the shit, it kind of gave me a reality check. It, like, woke me up, like, hey, maybe I really am in over my head. Like, Shella, what are you doing? And, you know, I was thinking about my siblings, my dad. And, like, I really wasn't pressed that something was gonna happen to them because these motherfuckers were not like that like they 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 were fucking clowns puppets they listened to everything this man said mind you this man never put in no work i never seen him fight before like if i really told y'all like the i'm not even gonna expose him but like he It's just like mind blowing the perception that like the image that you like can have on yourself it affects other people and I learned that from him like creating a, a, a facade or alter ego being someone that I'm not and people would rather believe a lie than the truth i mean it could be right in front of their face and like they will create a elaborate like storyline or like a a a fictional thing to a person based off of something they told someone else and that person made up an extra part and then just went running along and that's how I, like, kind of draw the conclusion of how my ex, like, had my neighborhood shook. I mean, like, it was so fucking sad. Like, by the time he really, like, caused chaos to the block, I was in the South in rehab and shit, you know? Like, and I kept getting phone calls of the shit that he done next. And look what he did to this one. And he did this to this one. And... It was meant for me not to be around during those times because I would have probably played Super Saver Hole or stood up because I feared nobody. Like, I wasn't scared of him. Like, I can't believe that my neighborhood didn't come together and whoop his fucking ass. Like, beat him the fuck up. How are you a man scared of another man? We bleed the same. Who the fuck gave you authority to fear of fear like i mean like my neighborhood was in fear of this man and it is true 
Yo, it's so true that it's sad. Males, females, old, young, like they was really scared of this motherfucker. I didn't understand this shit. Like, <laughs> what? If they would have listened to me, we would have got rid of him. I had a good plan, but they was fucking scared of him, yo. It's so sad. And now 46 of them, 44 of them is locked up on an indictment. They all in jail, all together. He had up the block, fighting with down the block. I mean, like, it was a fucking spectacle. It was a disaster. Like, it was crazy. Gang related, drug. Like, it, it, it. it blew my mind because I was in the midst of everything. Like, I was listening from this end on this end and the middle on this end with the people I grew up with. And they were scared of him. And they was playing both sides. And I was right there listening to the conversation, the text messages. Like, niggas was playing foul, yo. And I'm so mad that um I didn't become a fucking smut. At the bitter end, and these motherfuckers from the next block over me, they fucking um, ran and trained on my ass and took my sidekick slide. I guess that's what I get for being a slide. And my first fucking camera. Like, fuck y'all motherfuckers. <laughs> but yeah, yo, like, it was just so sad because, like, I had all of the screen... Well, not the screenshots, but the text message, like, everything the the guy I was with, he forwarded everything to me. Like, oh, this is him, right? This is him, right? This is him, look, look, look. And it was just so sad, yo, like, to see these niggas fall. And in some cases, I was right there, like, face-to-face with them, watching them lie to this man. And then... When he leave and go out of town, I see them with the op, playing copacetic, trying to say, like, it was just mind-blowing. And I was, like, 17, 18, 19 years old. I was still in high school. I caught myself dropping out at the time. Um, And, like, during, like, right after that, I started, like, selling drugs. Not selling drugs, but, you know, like, uh, being a fucking, uh... Uh, 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 I don't know what you call it, a flunky. Uh, well, I wasn't a flunky because I got paid for it and I got paid good money. At that time, it was good money, but, like, I was a transporter. (laughs) My job was collect from the connect, distribute to the neighborhood. (laughs) You know, like, that was it. I had the easiest job. And I just thought I was invincible. I was nice, slim, and petite. My ass sitting, breast sitting. You couldn't tell me. I, I, I was I was Sade, my middle name. I was Shella. This was before the bands. Yeah, I was lit. I was popping. I, I had the neighborhood on smash. Then I started fucking with this Spanish kid. And, like, he was, like, the maybe second person to really ever love my ass and of course life happened and like he treated me so good that was my son son (laughs) my son son (laughs) but yeah he um he was really good to me and like He tried to change my life around. He influenced me to go back to school. I mean, I had to go back to school because my mom was going to kick me out if I didn't. So I signed out and I signed right back in. But this time I was going to night school at Truman High School. I'll never forget it. And um, it, it was crazy, too, because night school saved my life. Like, everybody that I was selling dust with and shit, you know, drugs, you know, like... Yeah, I wasn't, oh yeah, I was a high class hustler. I wasn't nickel dime bagging. <laughs> I had that wet wet. We was lit lit. And um, they all got locked up for it. And, um, you know, someone snitched and, you know, it, a lot of shit happened. And um, while in night school, I, it was a Thursday night. I, will, I remember like it was yesterday. One by one, the whole team was getting knocked. And, you know... People just want to run wild with stuff, hype shit up, make stuff up. Oh, you're going to be next. You're going to get locked up next. I was not a real drug dealer. You know, like, I wasn't physically, here you go, taking the money. No, come on. I mean, I was right there while a lot of the, you know, 
transaction was going on and why everything was happening, but I wasn't pitching and like, ugh, no. So I know I wasn't going down. I mean, not really. I was a little scared, a little worried. And my god brother um, called me and was like, you better be careful. And at that point, um, like, within a month, I was going to graduate high school. Like, you know, everything was going to be over with. And, if, and I did. That fr that um month, February, I graduated high school. And I was free. Free. It was a lot of crazy shit that went on. And it happened so fast. And, like, at that time, also, when I was selling drugs, I was involved with the police. Like, I was... I did a lot of crazy shit, y'all. <laughs> I um was actually fucking a police officer and like, you know, trying to get all the information and like find out what was happening, what was going on. So, you know, I could tell my team, like, listen, this is how you gotta move and like it was just so crazy, yo. Like, I really thought I was unstoppable. Like I was invincible, like nothing bad. My eyelashes is I, could, I don't like you. See. I was really invincible. Like I thought I was, you know. I I I was involved in everything. When you know my niggas and shit got in jams, I took the gun, put it in my bag. Like I was being reckless, moving reckless. Like I was book smart, and I at that point I declared myself to be street smart. I wasn't not by a long shot and um everything was just happening so fast and like um shit was just catching up to me you know like it was a lot going on they all got locked up and then i had like a, a big fight on the block and shit i got beat up but not really washed up like the bitch thought she washed me and shit you know like it was just a lot my ex the first ex came back around into play and like he had bitches coming at me and shit like it was just too much so um i remember i got online and um i saw an ad you want to make a thousand dollars a day or something like that and it was like fast money big booty girls like some shit like that and i was like ding 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 and it was like it said five boroughs tri-state area dmv area and all i read was travel travel far away from this block far away from this hood it went from a millbrook story to the lifestyle of the pimps and the hoes <laughs>